Hi, John Matthew. Um, I'm not with Piku or Piku. I'll call it Piku. Uh, how many people uh, have used a PaaS before? A platform as a service, so-so? All right, well, I'm a, I'm a little developer on the side. Um, I, I like to code on the side. I saw my first computer at 15 many, many years ago. I was hooked. Uh, and then I got a career in computers, which has done me very well. Uh, along the side, I've been programming. I started in, uh, some of you might be old enough to remember Fox Pro, DBase. Anybody remember DBase? Good. Um, and then I moved up to Delphi. Any Delphiers? Excellent. So Delphi moved, that was a Python, or sorry, Pascal. And back in the days, you could actually just write an executable, right? A single executable. Kind of like Go and Rust do today. You could do that back in the command line days. Um, and then I've gone into uh, Python. So Python's sort of my preferred thing, specifically Django. Again, little projects I do on the side. Uh, along the way, I had a little app that did stocks. And it was a little single Windows 32 app, and it would track stocks and do this little formula I found in a book. And it was all cool. And then XP came out, and the app didn't work anymore because whatever. So I thought, well, I'll webify it. That couldn't be that hard, right? So I found Django, and then I don't do UI at all, right? That's why Delphi was awesome. You drag and drop a couple buttons, a form, and magic happens, and away you go. Um, but along the way, I found out, uh, you guys have ever heard of OpenShift, right? Kubernetes, right? That kind of thing. So OpenShift 2 was a free platform as a service that Red Hat gave you, and they literally charged you like nothing. It was on Amazon. It was their own little pre-Kubernetes, pre-containers, pre-C groups, everything, right? And I'm like, cool, I'll just push my app up there. And it was a simple little website. It was awesome. I literally had to just do git push, right? So that's why I came up with the title was, I just want to git push my code, right? Any Kubernetes users? How many Docker people, right? Um, these are all great platforms. But for the hobbyist like me, I just literally want to push code to git. Now, uh, let's see here. Let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. Um, so I have a question for everybody. How many people have set up a Linux box to run a Python app or a Delphi or a, a Django app? Like soup to nuts, right? You go and you get a DigitalOcean vir virtual machine. I got to install Nginx. And then I got this WSGI thing going on. And then I got to write my code. And it works. This is exactly what I did, right? I got it working. And then I make an update. Oh, crap. What do I do? Nothing sophisticated like git pull. I do a CP of the new code base, restart you whiskey maybe, all of this stuff. It's not very, not very elegant at all. Um, then this whole thing started getting popular, this platform as a service, where they would take your code and run it on the internet, right? Heroku was very popular. Heroku users, anybody? Right? Great platform, but it got expensive pretty quick, right? Their free platform, I think that went away. Um, Google came out with App Engine. They actually um, hired Guido Van Rosen, the creator of Python, for a while. They did a Django thing. App Engine probably one of the first most robust ones to begin with. Uh, Microsoft has their own, the App Service, very good product. A lot of these uh, started using Docker. And the build pack spec out of Heroku is what they all use pretty much in the background, right? So. But again, if you've ever pushed simple code to Microsoft or Google, it's kind of laborious, right? It's kind of like long in the tooth. And again, if you're an enterprise or you have a big app, awesome, right? Total, you got all this you got security, scalability, uh, HA, the whole bit built into these platforms. Me as Mr. Hobbyist, right, running out of my house or maybe a DigitalOcean VM, I don't need all this stuff. I just want to push my code to Git. So, I stumbled onto, <coughs> I call it Piku. It's actually Piku. The guys who created wanted to run it on a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a open source app, uh, similar to Doku. So if you've done any of these uh, apps, there's something called Doku out there, D-O-K-K-U. Um, Doku is a little more uh, behind the scenes, a little more complicated. It does containerization of things and all that stuff. Um, Piku was really just a simple, and I'll go over their, their their requirements in a second. Very simple, install it, push your code, Bob's your uncle, you're done. And I'll demo that. And oh, by the way, along the way, feel free to put your hand up, right? I'll, I'll take questions, I'll repeat the question. I don't need a McKinsey run around like a, you know, end of the day. Um, let's see, 
uh, it's, you, I, I'm going to run it on a, 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 I pay 12 bucks a year for a VM. It's a one by one. I'll show my demo on that. You can run it on any size VM. But it's, it's really, it's great for, for hobbyists. It's the perfect thing for me. So I thought I'd come to scale and basically give it, you know, give a talk on why I like this thing, right? I'm not, I, I love containers. I run Kubernetes at home. All my services for Postgres, SSL termination, all that at home is through Kubernetes. But if I want to run a simple Python app, right, like a Django app, I don't need seven YAML files. I just want to push my code, have some 12-factor app features, and go. And I'll demo all of that here, OK? Um, scalable. I wrote scalable. So <clears throat> along the way, and I'll talk about you, Wizgy, in a second. So this is, they have this from their website. I just kind of fancied it up. Their, their core values. Low-end devices. The guy that created Paiku, by the way, all these slides, I know you guys are taking pictures, these are all in my repo. I have this exact deck in the repo. You're welcome to download it. Uh, just, I'll show you the link at the end. It's in the, it's in the docs. Um, the original guy that wanted to do this wanted to run on Raspberry Pi, right? I'm sure all of us has Raspberry Pis, right, at home. Great little product. Uh, but again, you're back to that whole, like, bare Linux box I got to install Nginx. I got to get, you know, get my sites.d going. I got all this stuff, right? There's just work involved, and they wanted to make it so it was really simple. Um, they have some other things here. The actual Paiku app itself, the actual code that does the work, is under 1,200 lines of code. It's a single Python file. It's super cool. It's super, super cool, super, super simple. Um, it doesn't really need anything. It, I'll show that the install takes seconds. The install is basically, um, it sets up your machine with a couple libraries, and that's about it. The actual Paiku.py app is really small. Um, how many people are familiar with 12-factor, the whole 12-factor idea, right? So this is basically there's no hard-coded anything in your app. Uh, environment variables are big. Don't rely on anything, so your app should be portable. They try to cover that as much as they can, and I'll go over that uh, as well. Um, and frankly, it just works, right? And they used all the standard tooling. Um, I learned a lot getting into this product. Um, and I'll cover what I, what I did there as well. And we will do this. So we'll do the install. I, I pre-installed it because I was having some wonkiness with my VM uh, on the VM itself. So basically, you install what's called the bootstrap on your VM, which sets it up with a Paiku user and some SSH keys, right? And we'll get into the magic there as well. Um, anybody like SSL, right? So Let's Encrypt, great product, or CertBot as it goes by in the Kubernetes world. Great product, uh, came out after the Snowden incident. Um, but Let's Encrypt isn't super easy sometimes on, a, on an app. They have it built into every app you push to Paiku. Every app you push out gets an automatic SSL certificate. And if it can't get to the internet, like sometimes in my home cases or maybe my laptop, it generates a self-signed certificate for you. All of this stuff, all built in. It's really cool, a lot of fun. Um, proc file. I didn't know what a proc file was. I heard about it from Heroku. Proc files are pretty cool. It's a very straightforward, almost key value file. And I'll go over some of the features that they use for this. Um, and it dovetails into uh, some of the UWSGI features. Um, again, at the end of the day, I like it because I get to say git push piku, piku. That's, that's literally all I want to do. I don't want a Docker file. I don't want any of that stuff, right? Again, I go back to what my needs were, and I thought, well, maybe if I've got this need, other people will, will do it as well. <clears throat> uh, let's see. All right, so the other thing is, any Django? Writers here, any Django authors? Nobody does Django here? How many Python people? OK, what other languages do you guys use? Ruby and Java. Ruby and Java? Scheme. Scheme. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I met him earlier, Aaron, over there. Any other languages? Go. How about async, right? Some Python async. All of those are doable. It's just not limited just to Python, although UWSGI was kind of a, a, a front end to that. Um, they do front end all of the HTTP stuff with Nginx, and a feature of that is that you can service static sites. <coughs> pardon me. You can service static sites directly out of Nginx. You don't need Python. You don't need anything. In fact, 
Um, anybody run static sites? I run Hugo at home. What do you run? Hugo? So my son, uh, he's in high school, I just forced him to make a Hugo static site for his projects because I need the recruiters from colleges to see all this, right? So I run that out of my house, drmatthew.org, by the way. So all of that is hosted in, in Hugo on a static site that Nginx serves, but I pushed it up using Piku, okay? All of this is very flexible, very easy to use. Um, what else we got there? Supported. Um, so the, the guys who wrote it and the guys up on the GitHub forums and the issues and the discussion list, super cool, very responsive. I've got a couple PRs up there, a couple issues I filed. Uh, I, I haven't really added to the project. I've just pointed some stuff out. Um, they also have an ENV file. I'll go through all this stuff. Um, and again, at the end of the day, it's just Nginx and UWSGI. If you've ever built a Linux box to do a app on the internet using sort of, I'll call it by hand, they don't do any magic. There's zero magic happening. So at the end of the day, and I can, I'm happy to go show this, you can SSH into the box and see all the files that they built, right? And you're like, oh, there's the problem. And I'll talk about an experience I had there. <clears throat> A little architecture diagram here for you. So Nginx, again, I mentioned answers everything. Piku or Piku is the one that controls all these parts there. Um, Anybody done, a, I don't think so, but I don't think a lot of you have done a lot of UWSGI work, or micro, or what's it, micro whiskey, right? So micro whiskey came out in a effort to support the WSGI standard for Python apps, and it actually does quite a bit of stuff. Uh, it can actually run multiple instances of, it, of, of the same app, it can run multiple apps, it can run single executables by itself, but it manages all this for you and, and that's through the emperor, and if the app fails, for example, maybe some lame schema app fails for whatever reason, it will restart the schema app for you. Kind of like what System, System D does, right? But it does it at an app level. Um, and again, uh, Piku manages all that for you. But if you had, say, a Go app or Rust or something, and you wanted to just run that and answer the HTTP call, it will allow you to do that as well. <clears throat> Let's see, all right. Any questions before we kick into the demo? Anybody got a use case for me? It's the end of the day, everybody's dead. I'm really, uh, give yourselves a round of applause for being here because 6.15 on a Saturday at, at scale is kind of crazy. All right, we're gonna kick into a demo. I can almost guarantee we'll be out of here before the end of the day. Let's see, okay, I got my little, everybody see that okay? I'll blow that up a little bit. All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, how many Windows users? Nobody, of course, one or two guys. How many Mac users? All right, Linux, pure Linux desktop users, okay. So uh, I'm haters are all non-Windows people. Uh, and this is what Microsoft did, the new Microsoft came out with WSL, if you haven't heard of this, it's Linux literally on Windows. Uh, big background, I'm kidding about the hating part. But uh, real quick, they hypervised Windows, in case you don't know how this works. There's a hypervisor sitting in front of Windows running Linux and uh, Windows, Windows and Linux side by side, and I get the raw speed of Linux on my Windows box without any nonsense of like the old days. All right, so um, let me go to my demo notes. Go back to here. All right, so we're going to install Piku on a VM. And I have a VM called Scale 21. Go figure. And it has an SSH key, right? <clears throat> is that big enough? Is that, is that font big enough? Bigger? How's that? Better? More? All right, we'll clear that. All right. So my notes tell me to curl it down. I'm literally taking these notes from... Um, from their website, right? So we're going to curl it. We're going to download what they call the bootstrap code. And what this is really, it's a, a single Python app, but it, it installs Ansible. How many Ansible users? Anybody? Okay, so it installs Ansible just to make life easy for package installation. It's not, nothing fancy here. Again, it's all open source. You can see what it's doing, right? So now I think, oh, so I got to sudo it. Uh, let's see if I can remember my password. 
All right, so we're going to install it. Thank God the VM is doing its thing. It's already installed, but I want to show what it looks like. Um, and this is on the VM. Uh, it's a, a site called Racknerd. All right, wait, oop, sorry. Got that, see? Look at that, live. All right, we're going to say install it, please. So it's going to go out. It's going to download a, a, a playbook. It's going to run the playbook, which has already been played and run, so everything's good to go. It takes about two minutes, less than two minutes. Um, it Right now, this playbook is written specifically for Ubuntu. There are others. You can install any flavor of Linux, but they only have a playbook that runs, or this bootstrap only runs on Ubuntu. Okay? So what it does along the way is it adds a Paiku user. It takes the SSH keys from me and puts them there. That's important, and you'll see that in a second. Okay. So that's installed. That's really all I got to do on this VM. That's it. I'm done. Now, if you're a Doku user, Doku does a lot of stuff, I think, locally. Uh, I'm not that familiar with it. In fact, let me close this PowerShell one. Oh, come on. All right. So now I'm back on this guy. I'm going to go into my development folder and demo. Ah. All right. So next my code says to clone my repo. All right. So what I did is I wrote a basic hello world. Go figure. Uh, let's see. We'll go up here. Uh, basic hello world in Django. There's nothing fancy about it. I just know Django, so that's why. All right, we're going to see the end of that. All right, we're going to say, now in this repo is this talk. So if you find this, if you're uh, happy to show you what the link is, it's up on GitHub, look me up. Uh, the PDF of my talk is in this repo, so everything's already there. So we're going to say Python. Oh, first, before we do that, we're going to in, in Invoke our virtual environment. <coughs> and we're going to say Python. Jeez, I don't normally work face down. Manage uh, run server. I'm just going to demo it locally, right? And it says, OK, go to this website. And I have a hello world, right? That's locally. It's running. If you're a Django, Python guy, whatever. It's working on my laptop, but, you know, that old adage, it works on my laptop. So we're going to kill that, and we're going to say, you know what? Let's go to my notes. And I'm going to say, I'm going to add. Now, this is the critical factor. How many, how, many S how many SSH geeks in here? OK, I want to see if you can tell me how this works then, because I didn't. I had to learn how this worked. All right, so we're going we're gonna to tell. So. We have a git, obviously a git repo. We're going we're gonna to add a remote. Um, we're going to add a remote repository to the VM, which is called scale21. Right? We're going to call, we're going to add it. It's, the remote's called Piku, and it's going to use SSH to, to use the SSH user of Piku, and colon, we're going to give it an app name. Now, the beauty here is you can have as many apps on Piku as you want, right? I run about half a dozen at home, right? Obviously, performance and all that stuff matter. Uh, you got to take care of that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to add that, right? And then, what do my notes say? I'm just going to push my code. Remember what I said? I just want to push code, right? That's all I want to do. So we're going to say git push Piku. It's prompting me for my, wind my uh, SSH key. If I get that right, okay. So, what peak, what what Git does is it pushes it, it SSHs in, and it runs all this code for my for my SSH geeks. Why does it do this? How does it do this? I didn't know how this happened. This was magic in my book. Say that a little louder. Right, but it, this isn't the Git feature is kind of what I'm going at. So I didn't know SSH could do this, but you can actually, when you SSH as a user, you can have it run a command. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, you say now, you know. I didn't know that. And so what they did, it's so simple. They just said run pq.py. And pq.py says, oh, 
I'm a remote repo. I take it in. They, let's go back a little bit. <clears throat> Hope you like the geekness of this talk because I think it's the, the part that's fun for me, right? So they say, oh, we don't have a, an app called Scale Demo. We're going to deploy it. They look at the repo and they clone it down. They create a virtual environment. This is all Python-y stuff, right? And it recognized I had Python because I had a requirements.txt. And then they do a, a pip install of all my stuff. And then poof, I've got a, I've got a Piku app that doesn't run. What am I missing? Let's see what I'm missing here. What's my notes? I got to, oh, I got to tell it what the server name is for Nginx. Now, this is more magic in my book. Remember I mentioned it does automatic SSL search? So watch this. I say piku config set. This is part of the 12-factor stuff, right? Uh, Nginx server name. Hands are cold and I'm typing down, so bear with me. Equals scale 21, I think is my, my name dot, uh, oh, 3756 home, my home domain, dot org. Ooh, can't screw that up. Oh, <clears throat> and watch the magic. Now, it's already up there, right? But now I've changed it. I've given it a, a server name, and now what it does is it goes up and says, I'm going to update the Nginx, and I'm going to generate a certificate for that domain. However, because I didn't want to get anything screwed up in a live demo, I've already generated that cert, okay? So now in theory, I should be able to go to that domain. Let's see if it works. Oops, wrong. Let's see here, go here, come on. All right, so we're gonna not look at the market. We're gonna say scale 21 dot. Nothing? Come on. Now, now I, I say to you, can you read that? I can't read that. That needs to be a way bigger font. So, remember, I want to push my code. That's all I want to do, okay? Now, I'm not running anything on my laptop, but I'm going to say code dot. Again, WSL integration with VS Code. If you have questions about, VS, about the WSL, I'm happy to, to, to promote that. So, in my views.py, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to be super dorky, and I'm going to say... H1, right, boom, 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 boom. And I think it's the, I'm not an HTML guy at all. Slash H1, does that look right? Okay, we're gonna close that, save it. Now we can also run it locally, just to check. Python manage, run server. So this is locally, and double check, did my, did it take? That's not the one, it's that one. Look at that, it's bigger locally. So that's bigger, that's local. So we've done our dev. Now we're gonna push to production, damn it. We're just gonna screw that, through the CI CD stuff, we're gonna say, okay, so now I gotta commit it, right? Because this is all Git stuff. So I gotta say, okay, I'm gonna add that file to my Git repo. I'm gonna say demo larger font. I'm gonna commit that. So it's in the Git repo, push locally, I don't want to sync changes to my to GitHub yet, and I'm just going to say git push, Piku, very good, excellent. See how quick you guys learn? We're going to put that in. It's going to do some more magic, done. Now, did it work? Let's go see, control refresh, look at that. So, I got what I wanted, which was git push code. I don't want anything else. I don't need containers. Now, I know you're saying, John, there's magic under that table. No, there's not. Because what we're going to do is we're going to SSH, SSH in to scale21.3756home.org. You like that? You like that, Pedro, that domain? Isn't that cool? That's my home address. All right. We're going to sudo. We're going to look under the covers. Sudo su piku. This is one of the reasons I love this product, because it's not magical, right? If I go look at, and if you know Nginx, uh, was it Nginx dot, and, right? I look at that, and I look at the bottom, am I right? Oh, where is that going? Oh, I know what I gotta do. 
Let's see, Nginx, CD sites available, I think it is. I don't ever have to do this, so more default. I'm taking this apart. Okay. Notice this little, let's see, let's do that at the bottom. Yep, sorry. We're going to say more engine uh, default. Oh, okay, whatever. This is the line I'm going for here. See this magic right here? So what they do is they include all of their Nginx configuration files. And I go look at that and I go, oh, okay, cd.pq, Nginx. And look at that, scaledemo.conf. Ah. Boom. There's the, there's the crap I would have done on my hand, but they did it for me, right? So again, I'm simpleton hobby guy. I just want to sit up, right? No magic with no, there's no special uh, and, you know, SSL server. It's all standard Nginx, all standard Linux, all that stuff. Now, um, another couple cool features I want to show off. So you guys can all hit scale21.3756home.org. But before you do that, hold on. Um, Piku logs. <clears throat> hit it. So if you hit the site, I should see some logs go by, right? Check it out. There you go. And you came from an iPhone. See, look at that. Isn't that cool? So again, all of the stuff that we try to build and all this stuff, it's all built in, right? I, again, I don't work for these guys. I don't make no money at this. I just love this because I, I have like five or six apps at home that are running on Piku, right? That are just, I just literally get push to Piku and I'm done, right? And I can make changes and all that stuff. Now, again, since it's a Linux VM, I can attach any sort of monitoring, Grafana, whatever you want to throw on there. Um, let's see what else is available. Piku. Now, Piku I have installed on my laptop, right? It's a Pi file. It's just a Python file, right? So I can say, what apps are there? What's the current config running? This is kind of cool. Uh, Piku config oops, live. And then, boom, there's part of my 12 factor, right? Tells me all the pieces. There's my Nginx server name in there somewhere, right? Um, Let's see what else we have. Uh, I'll cover the rest. So deploy, you can deploy an app. Destroy, again, we'll do that at the end here. Uh, logs, we covered that. The PS is kind of neat, right? So if you have, like, if you write a Django app, like, out of the box, it's not terribly performant because it's a synchronous sort of web request coming back. And you're like, man, I don't want to do async. I don't want to do all this threading stuff. I just want another instance of my app running, right? You just go, oh, okay, Piku, Let's see if I get this right, uh, PS scale. Um, oh, I got to show you something before that. Hold on. So before we do that, we're going to say Piku PS. Now this says what processes for Piku or Piku are running on the box, right, for this scale demo app. All right, we'll do that. And it says, WSGI has one instance of it, right? Now, because of you WSGI, and I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you the website in a second, you can actually run other apps alongside it as a, as a UWSGI app. So, for example, I have an app that downloads stock data every day. It's a lame hobby of mine, right? But I don't want... I want it to be a Django app, but I also want on the side every minute, I want it to just go out and do it. So I have another app called, you know, download, and it's running one instance, and it's running all the time, right? But it's managed all by UWSGI. So now I say Piku PS scale WSGI, I think two. Let's see if I got the syntax right on that. I don't Got to get my password right, too. Oh, bummer. Let's see if we do that right. WSGI. Don't do this very often, so. Let's see what the help tells me. Oh, I know. I, did I, did I, well, let's see. PS scale. Proc. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. WSN equals 2. Please work. 
Okay. Now what it's done is it's launched two instances of my app on that same server. Okay. And let's just SSH in and see what that looks like real quick. If I'm going, if you guys want to interrupt me and do something else, let me know. I'm just going to try and show off all the features. Uh, scale 21 dot home dot org. Okay. So ps dash ef. Great question. So when I'm not on the scale server, yes, I'm on WSL. I'll, I'll demo that. Oh, I know. Yeah, to get the, so I don't have to do my password. Yeah. Okay. But it's so much more fun typing it every time. Okay. Um, anyway, so if you look carefully, you'll see uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's Nginx, there's WSGI Piku, but there's scale demo master, and there's another copy of scale demo. And what it will do is you, Whiskey, will load balance to those two Python apps, right, for you. Again, scalability out of the box. Uh, Whiskey is an actually amazing app. They don't actually update it anymore, but it does some really cool stuff. And like I said, you can have it, let's say you had a, 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 a scale or a Go app or a Rust app and you want to just run it, it'll run it for you and just maintain it, right? It'll just do it. It'll send requests to it if you want to have it proxy there. Um, what else can I show off? Uh, okay, so there I'm... I'll do one more Piku, and we'll see if there's any other things we need to demo. Told you I'd get you out here before it's over with. Um, setup, I don't really do that much. You can stop an app. Uh, you can shell into your, this is pretty handy. I, I actually have, I wrote a couple repos for these guys to use Django 5 with Postgres. Um, and one of the things you need to do sometimes is get into your app, right? So I don't want to have to SSH in as me and then SU to Piku and all this nonsense. I want to go right to the directory where my app is, and they have that to do SSH, right? So I do that. And OK, John, how about shell? I get so excited up here. All right, so we go here. And then, boom. That's, that's my app directory. Done, right? All the stuff that was in my repo is right there. So if I'm running, and, I'm, and the nice thing is, if I've already got my virtual environment running, uh, I can do Python manage, um, huh. right? And it, you know, all the Django stuff clears, comes up. Um, there's some things in, in Django you need to do. But the nice thing is, is that you get right into your, right into your app, right? It's right into your app directory, and you're, you're Piku, right? You're not super user. Any of that stuff. So it's, it's really handy on that front. Um, what else is there? One more? We'll see what else we've got to demo. Init, eh, shell, update. Um, you can run commands remotely, right, as a, as a shell. Let me go back to my notes, see what I'm missing, if I'm missing telling you guys anything. Um, so we saw the, uh, the cert, right? So it's got, it's got the cert here. Um, uh, it tells you it's, uh, it tells you it's who, who it is. But anyway, right, so SSL automatically, again, if it doesn't, if it's local and can't get to Let's Encrypt or like um, use, I use NIP.io sometimes in my home systems. Um, if it can't generate a cert, it'll give you a self-signed cert, which is nice. Um, yeah, so questions, comments? Cool? All right. Let me go back. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to demo. I know I went pretty quick. If you have any questions or comments, um, I'm happy to. And I, I got you out of here pretty quick. Yes, sir. Mackenzie's got to work for the end of the day, so. OK. That's on. So the question is, what you have to basically do manually for this to work, for this demo to work, was to create a DNS entry for scale 21 dot your domain, right? And made a point to your server that it, whatever you're running Correct. at home, that part you had to do manually. Um, so that's true with any server. Right, right, but that's my right. point. Like that's part of the Pico doesn't take care of. Correct, yeah, Pico doesn't do the DNS stuff for you, no. Okay, okay. That's all I'd have to do anyway. Okay, 
I don't know anything about the whiskey part. So that my, pro my second question in that sense is how does it, does it isolate in containers or it just processes? Oh, okay, it? so how does we, we whiskey isolate? It doesn't do any isolation. Okay. It just does process management. Right, so you whiskey is like 15 years old or whatever, it's really old. Um, it's a great product, it's written I think in C. Yeah, it is in C and I'll explain why I know that in a second. So it literally just manages processes on Linux um, and if they crash, if you want X numbers running, all of that stuff, does that answer your question? So I, I got into you whiskey and learning how it did it because one of the things, one of the things they, let me go to their website. The, the website's got really good documentation um, uh, let's see here. Let's see. Come on. Yeah, it was. It was. It's really old. Um, let me see if I. Where, I'm, I'm, I'll just type it up here, John. All right. So I'll go to their website. So their website's really good, and like I said, they answer questions right away. Um, so. They, the PRUC file, I talked a little bit about this. They, they just took what Heroku did and they adopted it. And so you can have um, several features in here. Um, there's, let's see, there's, there's WSGI, that's automatic. Uh, static, that's how you would map like an Nginx folder directly to your app directory. And then that way you wouldn't have to go and serve it through your app, you would just have Nginx do it. Um, the nice one, there's something called release, which is like a pre, before it publishes your code, it runs that code. Um, that's handy. Cron is the one I was getting to about um, how I knew use whiskeys in C. So cron, you can say run this command every cron, like, right? But if you get into like deep cron, like I wanted mine to run from 6.30 to 1 o'clock. Hmm, I wonder why. However, their cron regex doesn't do that, and new whiskey doesn't either, right? And so I ended up having to work around that. That's how I know you whiskey's in C. However, um, hopefully that answers your question. So you whiskey was very old, long before C groups, anything container related came out, and they just manage processes in Linux. Other questions? Comments? Nothing? Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you go install Piku and have fun.